Jones with the Arts Democrat Gazette. Uh, I wonder, in, in looking at the, the Maryland cut-ups that I've seen, it looks like your offense has evolved quite a bit since you left here. In, in, in your words, how would you say that it's changed? Well, I think, uh, you know, in this game, the great thing about this game is it's, it's constantly evolving, and you can either adapt and evolve with it or you'll find yourself on the outside looking in at times. So, you know, through my career, I've always tried to at least try to stay on the cutting edge of what people were doing and learning new things. But I think some of the experiences that I've had um, going to different places and, and, and uh, learning how the, the, diff the different things, uh, the RPO world um, has, has kind of, you know, brought on a whole new realm of the game that um, we didn't do a lot of. And then obviously, as Coach mentioned, I think you're always going to try to do things that your personnel can do. And, uh, you know, when you have a quarterback that can run, you're going to maybe do more things where he's he's able to, to use his his feet. And if you have a quarterback that can't run and, and he's only he's a pure drop back passer, you're going to you're going to streamline things to 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 help him and, uh, you know, use his abilities. But the big thing is, is that, you know, we're going to evolve and we're going to use the talent that we have uh, and try to get them the ball and uh, try to find creative ways to uh, be efficient on offense. And, you know, so, but I, I think really think it's just been more of the experiences that I've had and the guys that I've been with, you know, going, going to Alabama and um, when I, when I left here and working with Mike Loxley, you know, uh, Mike was a coach was a spread spread guy, really, you know, an RPO guy. And, I was kind of the pro style guy in the room, if you will, and it was just so neat the conversations that we had about football when we were, you know, kind of in installing that system and, and and doing what we were going to do that year. I learned a ton, and um, hopefully, I, w I was able to 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 reciprocate that to some of the guys in the room. But yeah, you know, we just did what we did, and then we just continued to evolve. So, from what you've seen of, of KJ on film. Are there similarities to what you were working with with Talia at Maryland? Yeah, there, there actually is. You know, um, uh, KJ kind of reminds me of Jalen Hurts a little bit too. You know, there's – I always, you know, I'm a big – I'm trying to like, you know, find comparisons, if you will. I, one thing I will say is I've coached a lot of quarterbacks over the years. I, this will be my 32nd season coming up as a collegiate coach, and um, they're all different. They're, there's, n there's not two the same, you know, and I tell this to the guys all the time. But there's, there, but with the great ones that I've coached and been around, there's a lot of similar characteristics, if you will, things they have in common. And you know, KJ's a guy um, like Talia and like Jalen um, is a very good passer and is very athletic. You know, it's actually kind of exactly what you're looking for uh, if you really, really want to put defenses in a bind. Is have a guy that can beat you with his arm and his brain, but also can beat you with his legs. And I've been very, very impressed watching the film of KJ. I've obviously watched. Arkansas on TV and things like that, just obviously being a fan of Coach Pittman and rooting for him um, the last few years when we are able to watch. I got a chance to see him, but then now studying the tape and everything, it's been very impressive to look at his skill set. Coach Woodson, Coach Pittman was telling us we'll have to ask you about how y'all are going to split up things in the secondary. How do you envision that? Are y'all going to split up corners, safeties, or how's that going to work? No, uh, you know, we're two different people, but we're going to be one as we work together in the secondary. It's going to be times where I take the corners, he take the safeties. It's going to be times when I take the safeties, he take the corners. So it's going to really be, you know, us working together and just finding what's the best fit for the players to put them in the best position to be successful. Coach Wilson, it sounded like you had some several opportunities in the SEC. What was it about Arkansas that drew you here? Um, the thing that um, drew me here, uh, really not the thing, the person uh, and the people that drew me here was uh, Coach Pittman. He's a stand-up guy, great guy. Uh, as soon as the opportunity came, uh, I reached out to some of my mentors that had worked with him, that have, that knows him, and everything was he's a man of character, he's a man of faith, he's a great guy, You'll be, he'll be the best head coach you ever worked for. That was the consistent answer that I got over and over and over. Uh, when people you really trust uh, say those things, um, you, of course, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. And uh, with Coach T. Will and Coach Woodson, uh, the initial interview when uh, it was just the the natural mesh that we had is almost I'm, I'm not sure. Well, you are married, um, so it was kind of the initial uh, when you met your wife, you kind of knew like she's the one. I know I'm gonna marry her in that <laughs> sense, um, and that's the feeling I got uh, during the interview with Coach Woodson, Coach Woodson, and Coach uh, T. Will. Coach, just, just from the – Dan, you 
this Otis Kirk in Hogville. Dan, you've recruited here, just but the other Coach Woodson, Coach Wilson, just what do you feel like are some of the recruiting advantages for Arkansas that you can sell? For myself, uh, the first thing when you think about the University of Arkansas. Uh, if you go to the state of Texas, if you go to uh, Georgia, the Atlanta Braves, right? If you start talking about Texas, you have the Cowboys, you have the Houston Texans, you have you have all these pro teams. In the state of Arkansas, you have the University of Arkansas. Uh, it's the flagship state school where it's a dream. Kids, you want to come here growing up. Like, I want to go to the University of Arkansas. That's, I mean, your number one pitch is we are the pro team. We are the the players the coaches, they want to see us, right? And that's that's the number one pitch in uh, some of the winning tradition you have. Uh, I, going back to my playing days, when you're talking Ryan Mallett uh, and Darren McFadden, a lot of those guys, you start talking about the winning tradition. Uh, there's a lot of things you can sell when you're talking about this university. Yeah, well, for me, I, I don't sell anything. You know, for us, it's about the people. You know, I feel like this is the best staff in the country. And with us, you get what you see, you know. So when it comes to being developed as a person, when it comes to being developed as a student athlete, I feel like we got the best staff in the country. And then as Coach Wilson just mentioned, I mean, it's Arkansas. When you look at the resources and the connections and the network that you can develop here at at Arkansas, it can open up doors beyond football that's going to really benefit you in life. And, you know, for us – that's what it's all about, just being who we are. And, you know, this this place, once you come and visit, it speaks for itself. That's going to be the key for us is getting guys on campus and letting them be around who we are. And when that's the case, you don't have to sell anything. Trey Biddy, Hog Sports, 24-7 Sports. Uh, Coach Pittman was talking about taking best available players with the remaining nine uh, vacancies in the scholarships. Uh, I've got you guys with nine cornerbacks and – six safeties. I was curious if you guys felt like you need to just take best available or if you need to kind of focus on on defensive back. Well, for me, it's about what's best for the roster, and that's for Coach Pittman to decide. Now, when it comes to Coach Wilson and myself, we're going to be prepared with the guys that can help us win in the secondary that's, that are available. You know, so at the end of the day, I add all nine to the secondary if he allowed that, and we're going to have the guys in position where we can do it. But if what's best for the team is, is, is up for him to decide. If that's nine DBs, if that's one DB, or if that's two. You know, so whatever Coach Pittman and Coach Williams decide, that's the route that we're going to take. Um, Coach Pittman has talked about you know, Florida a little bit, getting more in there, and Louisiana. I was curious just what you guys thought you could bring to the table as far as recruiting in those territories where they haven't really recruited in those areas as much lately. Yeah, well, when it comes to defensive backs, we're going to recruit the best ones available in the country, regardless of location. Now, when it comes to my background, the Southeast is primarily the footprint of where I've experienced recruiting. You know, Florida, obviously coming from Florida State, I had an area there. Mississippi is my home state, you know, so I feel like any kid that's a, a SEC caliber player that can help us get better, we'll have a chance to go into that state and, and compete. You know, but anywhere in the southeast, the main thing is us just covering the footprint, whatever we decide that's going to be the footprint for Arkansas. Uh, I've recruited Dallas, you know, and some of the Texas area as well. And obviously having Coach Wilson from Louisiana, that will be able to help us out in that area as well. So, you know, collectively as a staff, I feel like we can go anywhere in the country and recruit because this is Arkansas. Woodson, welcome to Fayetteville. Alyssa Orange, Pig Trail Nation. You had Florida State's pass defense, number one in the ACC last year. A lot of that was development with guys that you had. A lot of criticism with Arkansas secondary over the years. Mm -hmm. How big of a development do you think you can come in here and help that secondary take that next step? Well, first off, uh, thank you for the welcome. Uh, Florida State was pretty bad when we first got there as well. And, you know, it took some work to get us to where we were at when I left. Uh, So I feel like that experience prepared me for this experience. Uh, Looking at the film from last year, uh, the main thing I want us to focus on is being intentional, being intentional with technique, being intentional with the fundamentals, 
being intentional with what we're looking at and, and the footwork that goes with whatever the coverage may be. Uh, you know, the pieces are there. I feel like with the guys that we have on campus right now, we can win with and we're going to win with. Uh, and at the end of the day, in addition to being intentional, I want to be super competitive. That, that's the thing. I want us to compete every play in all aspects of what we do. And if we just clean up some of the fundamentals, the eye placement, the foot discipline, and, and being super competitive every play, that's going to fix a lot of the problems that was had. So I totally expect for us to go from being last to tops in the country with, with the improvement we're going to make. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, just being back in Fayetteville, the family being back in Fayetteville, how have these past couple weeks been? It's been uh, a whirlwind, really, because um, it happened very, very quickly, as what usually happens in this profession. But it, it's been uh, it's been really good because I do have a lot of familiarity with, with Fayetteville. And so, you know, just getting back and forth and everything, when you take a new job, usually that's a struggle. So I haven't had to use the GPS at least to do that. But it's a, it's it really is a – it's a really special place, and one of the reasons why it was so easy for me um, to come back was because of our experience here the first time as a family and uh, just, you know, me as, as a professional too, just the passion that the fans have and the people have for this university, you know, going to the basketball game um, a week or so ago and feeling that in that environment and just, you know, being out with Coach Pittman and having all the people, you know, talking to Coach and just – it's just a very special, unique place. Um, and so it was very easy that way, but it's been, it's been great to be back. And then I have a lot of respect for, for Coach Pittman and him and I. Uh, we worked together here in 2015, and he's just been one of those guys that, you know, you work with, like you just kind of – you're on the same page right from the get-go. Like I walked in, I didn't know Coach Pittman when I got here in 2015. I was a new guy on the whole staff, and they, they all were together, and they were looking at me like, okay, what's this guy about? And me and Coach and really that entire staff hit it off. We meshed very, very well. He's very easy, easy to work with. But he promised me, though, that there wasn't an old, stubborn guy on the staff like him this time. So <laughs> Coach Kennedy's been actually been a lot easier so far to, to, to work with. And Coach Pittman was a little bit there at times. But uh, I, be, I believe in what, he, what he's about and, and, and what, what he stands for. And, it's a, again, this is a special place. It's a great place. Yeah, hey, guys. Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, Marcus. Um, your relationship with Travis, like, can you explain maybe how you feel like you guys are going to work, how that's going to go? Yeah, well, first off, we're brothers. I mean, we were at Auburn together, and we, similar to what Dan just said in terms of him and Coach Pittman, I mean, we just hit it off right away, and it felt like we had been knowing each other for a lifetime when we first met. His wife, my wife, his kids, my kids, we're all one, one family. In terms of, you know, the, the, the coordination of the defense, he's the defensive coordinator. And he's the chief of that room. I'm an Indian. Uh, however, I can help in terms of the big picture. When he asks for my input, I'm going to give it to him. But my sole focus is primarily, as Coach Pittman mentioned, the back seven and, you know, how we do things to get the, the back end cleaned up and to make this whole thing go in terms of the big picture. But uh, he's the defensive coordinator. Uh, I'm going to be right by his side and helping him, helping him in any type of way he need my help. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're just going to do what's best for the defense to, to be the best in the conference. Dan, you touched on something I wanted to ask about, too. Already working with Sam before. I don't know, digging a little bit further on that. What is it about him, you think, that allowed him to be a successful head coach? That's a, that's a great question. You know, when and, – um, I've, and I've said this to many people, and uh, I said this before I was hired here, but when Coach got the job, you know, you know, a lot of people were like, what do you think about, you know, Coach Pittman, how do you think he's going to do? You know, he's never been a coordinator. Or I said, you know what, that guy's going to be a great head coach because I'll tell you why. He's an outstanding football coach. He's very smart. He's very organized, and he's a great communicator. And you know what, the, the players loved him. They played for him, but he was not like, you know, like, you know, Coach Nice, if you will. He, he was not their friend, but that he d demands respect by the way he treats people and how he coaches them. And I thought, you know what? I bet you this guy is going to be a tremendous head football coach because of all those things that we just talked about. And uh, he also, I think, um, has really done a really good job of, you know, putting people around him that 
are very, very good at what they do. You know, I've been, I told Coach the other day that just being around the support staff and getting to know everybody from the strength staff to, um, you know, the operations staff to the recruiting to everybody, there's really, really good people that are very competent at what they're doing. And Coach knows that he can, he can do that, do a great job of getting those people together and getting everybody to work together. That's the, the greatest compliment I can say is that this guy gets people to work together and get on the same page. Coach Woodson, uh, the two Baylor kids told me that you played a big role in their recruiting. What 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 did you see in them? And just how how do you think they'll fit in? Especially Walcott's personality. Yeah. I mean, Johnson never talked. Walcott never stopped talking. So <laughs> talk about those two kids. That's a great point. Uh, well, you know, the first thing we identified that they can help us when we watch the film. I mean, obviously they were really good players for Baylor, and um, you know we we reached out to them and touched bases. And over the phone, we knew that they were the right fit. But once we got them here on a visit, we knew that they were the right fit, absolutely. And they saw that Arkansas and us as a staff was the right fit for them and what they wanted next. And, you know, Coach Pittman gave us the blessing to be able to sign them and saw that they were the right fit as well mm -hmm. as individuals. So we knew we had needs in the secondary. Uh, we needed to bring some guys in that could make us more competitive with some guys that have started in the past. And uh, they've been great additions to the room. As you mentioned, Al, he's very outspoken. Uh, and he called me the other night just out of the blue and said, Coach, Snacks, and I want you to know how happy we are just to be Razorbacks. And, and they realized that it's mm -hmm. the right fit and they made the right choice. Uh, Snacks, you know, he's going to play corner for us. <laughs> He's a young man that uh, I'm challenging to become more vocal, uh, you know, just so he can provide some leadership within the room as well. But I also want him to be himself, you know. So at the end of the day, I'm excited to have both of them uh, in the room. Uh, they fit us. You know, they saw that we fit them, and I'm excited to see what the future has in store for them. Dan, it seems like a lot of head coaches want to have a former head coach on staff. Um, I don't know if you had that situation when, when you were at Central Michigan, but what are the characteristics that you think you have that, that help in, in that regard? Uh, well, I, I, you know, I, I said this uh, before, but having been a head coach before, I think I'm a better assistant coach because, you know, until you really actually have to sit in that chair every day and uh, deal with the day-to-day -day things and, I mean, day-to-day -day things, you know. There's not a lot of days off when you are when you sit in that chair. But I think you just have an appreciation for the job and um, the pressure and the, the organization and the vision and everything, you know what I mean? And, and so after I, I was done being the head coach and was an assistant coach again, I, I just tried to say, okay, listen, like, what is his, the head coach's vision? What's he, what's he want out of me? And how can I help him and help his job, you know? And then I try, what I try to do is – as you know, kind of being the elder statesman a little bit now, and having been a head coach, I try to maybe um, bring some experiences to the assistant coaches in the in the in the offensive staff room about things that you know, trying to like anticipate things that may happen, may help keep things off the head coach's uh, plate to make his job and life easier, and maybe explain a situation. Maybe the head coach maybe have, be thinking this because of this, um, and you try to look at it from his point of view. So. I think just my experience of, of being a head coach before has just made me just more aware and just have a much better appreciation for the job um, that the head coach has. Coach, you asked another question for me. So after you were hired, got to talk with uh, Drew Morgan, Johnny Gibson, you know, talent and $2 will get you a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and what they learned from you. <laughs> I know that Drew said he texted you. Um, Sam, similar when he was hired, just so much support from guys that he coached before. Being able to have that – to show the guys on this team now that the guys before, when I was here the first time, believed in me and, and with some patience and some hard work, you know, we, we can be what we were when I was here the first time. Yeah, it, it, that means a lot. You know, first off, that Johnny Gibson was listening to me, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, the, some of the things I'm like, wow, maybe they did listen. But, you know, just like uh, Brandon Allen and Austin Allen, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to, you know, we've, we've stayed in contact, but they text. They were excited. Dan Skipper, you know, he texts me please tell me this is real, you know, or something like that. And just all those guys, it means a lot as a coach. It, it, these guys will all tell you that when you, when you have players that you coached, you know, 
say things maybe that you said means a lot, but just more, more importantly, just excited and happy for you, just to have a relationship for you. Like, that's what coaching's about, really. I mean, we're here to coach them and all that, but it's about lifelong relationships, in my opinion, and that's the great thing about this profession that, you know, whether it's Mark Navarra, who was my first quarterback I coached at Lakeland College in 1994, him and I still have a relationship with, or my quarterback coach, Morris Watts, um, who I still have a relationship with, who I played for at Michigan State. That makes this this uh, this journey and this profession, all the hours, all the hard work, and all the things that go into it, just make it that much more fruitful, you know, just to have. And so I preach to those guys believing in me, and like, you know, as these guys will too, and our whole staff, you know, every day we come to work, man, we don't want to let anybody down. We want to do the very best we can, and and make make the people of this state proud of, of 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 the guys we coach and how we coach them. And we'll do we're going to put our best foot forward every day. And it's it's great to have support of guys that used to be here, and those were some great players too, and they were fun to coach. Thanks, fellas.